you may have been safer in the hands of a doctor in the ancient world than you might think. Roman medicine is extremely impressive. If one looks at their methods of observation, if one looks at their diagnoses, and if one looks at the sort of operations that they carried out, one can see that this was not surpassed for perhaps another 1,500 years. Modern medicine has changed our lives dramatically. Just 200 years ago, surgery was still a brutal and bloody lottery, but today it has become a precise and successful science. Yet hidden within ancient texts lie secrets which reveal that many of our modern scientific discoveries were already known 2,000 years ago. We now know a Roman doctor would have recognized a modern set of medical instruments and would have been just as highly skilled and trained in their use as a doctor of today. We tend to think of scientific medicine and surgery as modern day inventions. We like to imagine that if you were ill in the past, you might just wear an amulet or take a couple of magic potions or just pray to the gods. And to be fair, if you landed up in hospital in medieval Britain, that would be a reasonable description of what might happen. But the classical world is a completely different story and a much more sophisticated story. Many modern medical and surgical practices were not invented by us, they were reinvented by us. The doctors and scientists working in medical theatres like this one in the early 19th century were the pioneers in their day, living in the great age of medical discovery. But perhaps some of their ideas were not as revolutionary as history books have led us to believe. Two thousand years earlier, Greek and Roman doctors were carrying out operations including eye surgery, bladder operations, fusing broken bones, and even a type of brain surgery. The most highly skilled of all these ancient surgeons was an extraordinary doctor and philosopher whose invention and ambition drove him to become the greatest medical expert of the Roman era. His name was Galen of Pergamum. Galen was a genius, arrogant, he's learned, he's observant. All these things tell you about somebody from the past in an immediate way that's very, very rare. Galen lived in an age when Roman dominion stretched from Europe to North Africa and the Middle East. His home was in Pergamum in modern-day Turkey, a civilized and wealthy Roman city in the eastern reaches of that great empire. Galen's father, a cultured architect, claimed he was told by the god Asclepius in a dream that his son should become a doctor and there were few better places on earth for Galen to learn. Pergamum was a center for science, invention and medicine, the perfect place to begin his extraordinary career. Only one place could teach him more, Alexandria in Egypt. When Galen was just 19 years old, fate took a hand. The sudden death of his father gave him an inheritance which allowed him to travel. So it was to Alexandria that he came, the home of all the knowledge of the ancient world. The famous library of Alexandria was the place where Galen found inspiration. Years before, when the Greeks had ruled this city, their leaders had allowed scientists to dissect human bodies in the quest for knowledge, something that was taboo in Galen's day. 
Their incredible discoveries about anatomy were still kept in the library, and it was here, amongst these books, that Galen's fascination with the workings of the human body began. Even in Galen's time, the liberal Alexandrians still allowed the study of human remains, such as skeletons, something forbidden elsewhere, and this would give the young aspiring surgeon his first great opportunity. This was a time when little was known about how the body worked, and few people even dared to examine it. But in Alexandria, Galen could freely look and learn. Here he began a lifelong journey to understand the mysteries of human anatomy. He would not be content to leave the fate of people in the hands of the gods. He would put it instead in the hands of surgeons, his own hands. <laughs> 